Hi, I'm Paul Rayner. Uh, my company is Virtual Genius. For about the last three years, I've been doing a lot of work with domain-driven design. And I wasn't aware of a lot of the resources that are out there. And now I know about the mailing list and the uh, training courses. I've been on the domain-driven design immersion training course this week. I, I think it's probably one of the best-kept secrets in the domain-driven design community that's out there. Eric teaches these courses, and I'm here in... New York with Eric this week on the Domain Driven Design course. We've had three days, tomorrow's the last day, and it's just been a great experience. Oh, thank you. Yeah, the, uh, the DDD immersion class has been evolving for the last six years, actually. It, it, the earliest forms of it started to develop shortly after the book, but then it wasn't available as a public offering, so now we are offering it regularly. It's available here in New York. Uh, up to now, I'm mostly teaching those classes. It's available in London. There's a very good instructor, Goiko Adsik, who teaches it there. It's available in uh, Stockholm, Sweden, taught by Patrick Fredriksen. It's, uh, and it's soon to be available in... Oslo in Norway, uh, taught by Christian Nordahl, who's actually co-instructing right. it with me here. Yeah, there's a lot of different materials in the class. We've got, the, like, how did the coding exercises come about, for example? Were they grown over a long period of time? Yeah, they're, actually, they're pretty rigorous on on day one. I mean, it's just bam, 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 and we review and and uh, you know, it's got the tests there that we can look at. How, how did all that come about? Well, that's evolved over the last few years. It actually started with a quite different code exercise, but recently uh, we've done this new one. It's a little it it uh, it goes in more focused little you know little bits. And uh, one thing that you probably noticed is we're pretty serious about test first. Right. It's not that um, test first is an intrinsic part of DDD or something, but uh, I just find that it's a, by far a more useful way of looking at design is from the point of view of the test. If you are looking at a test and you see the code that's that you see some code in use from the right. client view, you see the ubiquitous language expressions. If you look at the objects that you're going to implement, you don't see those expressions in the ubiquitous language. You see pieces. Right. You see. From the wrong side, you're seeing it from the inside out. You're inside the forest. And, yeah. yeah. You don't see how it fits together to make statements, to make interesting statements. So I really think that people should spend more time, when they're working on design, they should be looking from the test point of view most of the time. And in fact, once you have a really well-crafted test, the implementation part um, isn't that interesting from the point of view of the right. course. So we often uh, just kind of fast forward through that part. Right. It's a class about design. Code needs to be in it, though. Um, teaching design and modeling without any actual implementation factor, without any code, it, it, uh, it misses the point of what software is. Right. Ultimately, if you can't express that model in code, then... All these exercises, all this activity of creating nice model diagrams and so on, so on is mostly wasted motion. It, it all pays off when you actually build software that is structured around those models. So we must have code in the class so that we can see that manifestation. Most people... Unfortunately, most people have never seen really well-crafted, model-based code. Right. And uh, so that's a chance to experience it and really tie together the experience of exploring a model with what it would look like right. in code. And, and as I said, most interestingly, from the perspective of the test, knowing that most people, once they get to that stage, are going to have no trouble with it. So one of the things I noticed in the class was that we don't cover everything. Like you said, it's a different experience from reading the book, and not all the patterns are covered. You emphasize certain things. So what was the rationale behind that? We do emphasize certain things. There is a kind of a core of DDD, and then there are a lot of sort of supporting patterns of DDD. Right. 
they're all in the book, but uh, maybe the emphasis doesn't come out as much as I would like. Sure. So in the course, though, we really have to focus and we right. zero in on what is the really critical part and then everything else kind of branches off of that. So, for example, uh, defining the core domain, well, that is really essential and we sure. spend a lot of time on that in the course but it's in chapter 15 of the book right a lot of people don't even get to chapter they don't 15 get there. in fact they don't get there mostly because they get to part two of the book which is about the building block patterns right and they kind of get bogged down and the building block patterns are valuable useful but they aren't the the heart of ddd they okay. are part of what it takes to make it work to make it work in typical object oriented right. languages and so on and they're they're valuable and important things but they aren't the essence of ddd which is more about the core domain uh, uh, placing models in context evolving a model sure. in a creative collaboration with domain experts and and establishing a ubiquitous language the sharpness and clarity of concepts. Right. And, uh, of course, then you do start to go over into the building blocks because some of the building blocks are what helps you build that sharpness and clarity. And the class, I think, uh, really carries that. I think people come out of the class really seeing what's the essential DDD. One of the things this week was the, the videos that we had. I was really impressed by those. Maybe... What was the background behind those? Because that, yeah. this is the first course I've ever been to where there was actually professionally edited video that that supported what we were doing, and we kind of used those as the case studies, which made it a lot more interesting and interactive and fun. Yeah, so the videos were actually edited by Vlad Gitlevich, who is uh, also doing this video. So the woman that plays the domain expert is a friend of mine in San Francisco who actually... Is a playwright and director and and uh, sometimes actor. Mm -hmm. So there was our one actual professional actor in right. the scene. Okay. And that was really helpful. The uh, one of the programmers in the video is a real programmer, mm -hmm. but there are a few little tricks. Uh, some of the documentation for the program that they refer to is actually scripts okay, oh, okay. so when, when he's looking down at the script he's looking at down and saying and yes. this formula here should be this he's actually reading his lines to remember it works well as yeah. video but it didn't start out that way before the video uh it was a little play that we performed in the class right, okay so much the way we do the role play in the context mapping we had one for interactions between domain experts and and uh software developers sure. as well and that script evolved little by little until it was you know sort of mature enough and we said no this could really maybe work as a video and i think in this case it's really helpful to have it as that because some of the some of the nuances like right. when the domain expert reacts in certain nonverbal ways. Right, there, there was one pit in the body language where it was very clear that she was not happy. I, I definitely that. body language there, which is, by the way, one advantage you get when you have an actual actor. Being, right. Thing. And, and uh, that you couldn't have, I mean, when we had the scripts, it was very participatory, but you didn't have all those nuances. So that's really nice. The script actually... There's a section in the book, right? There's a section in the book. Yeah, where there's, hmm. there's little dialogues illustrating how domain experts and, and software experts might interact. And at the very early days when I had just written the book, and I really didn't have any experience teaching classes, much less constructing classes. So I signed up to do a tutorial at Uppsala Conference. Uh, and I actually, uh, and this is such a helpful thing, Mm -hmm. So uh, Ralph Johnson, who was one of the authors of the Design Patterns book, right, Game, Game of Four, yep. Ralph Johnson, who was an enthusiastic supporter of DDD at a very early stage, he saw a draft that I had a couple of years before the book was done, and it was always really helpful. And anyway, and he's an experienced teacher, sure. And I um, somehow persuaded him to co-instruct this tutorial with me at Uppsala. And that was one of the smartest things I did. Because 
it was a totally different thing than it would have been if I had done it on my own. And one of and it was his idea to say, well, take these dialogues out of the book and we'll just have people read them in the class like a play. And then we'll talk about them. It just works so well. And it, little by little, then I started refining it because they were just little bits of dialogue and they weren't really meant to be a coherent um, narrative in a right. play. So I started refining it and... That's what eventually led to those. Well, it's nice because day one you've got the coding exercises that you're working through together and then day two you're watching videos and trying to work those out and then day three is role-playing. So it really mixes it up and you get to see the see these different aspects of DDD from a lot of perspectives and, and you're learning it as you're going by participating in it. I've never liked uh, a lot of, of straight-out lecture. To me... If you want to learn about DDD by, you know, sort of absorbing that way, well, the book is there. It's a good way to learn about DDD, but I wanted the class to be a completely different experience. Right. Someone who has read the whole book, has read the book twice, could still come to the class and still learn from the class, could get it from a different perspective. I think that actually brings depth to what you see in the exercises, and so... People who have read the book probably get more depth from the class than right. people who have not. But people who have not... Uh, it's a great get, foundation for then going back to the book and saying, oh, okay. Exactly. I think people who have had the class and then read the book, they get more out of the book. Right. So I, I wanted them to be complimentary. I, I figure if you're going to be in person, it has to be something that can only happen in person. The DDD immersion is called that because it's this experience. You know, right. it's four days long. It's very intense. It uh, comes at DDD from all these different angles. Right. It's meant to be an experience. So I, I had a look at domainlanguage.com today, and, and it seems like there's quite a few different ways for people to get connected. I saw you've got a newsletter. There's a listing of upcoming classes. So how, how does that work if, if people want to find out about the courses yeah, domainlanguage.com does have information about the classes and has schedules for the classes around the world. So uh, you can find it all in one place at, at the domainlanguage.com site. And then there's uh, links to inquire for more details. So um, you should be able to find everything you need there.